So welcome to the next episode of Tony Digs on Tech. This is episode five. Five. Yeah. <laughs> So, these are all the camera boxes, no camera, phone boxes that I've had that have been in this house uh, for like the longest time possible. Um, the oldest here that I can see is probably this, this old phone right here. If you remember this phone, you come from a long time ago by the way. <laughs> um, this, this box is a bit dirty, but yeah like um this is the samsung d880 this was from uh from dubai i believe my um, dad got it um uh, it is a dubai model uh, tri band remember the time when edge was such a big deal yeah like this it the gprs and edge a little bit of it. yeah gprs and edge yeah uh, this is among the first technos that I ever used. Um, this was a QWERTY phone. It was my dad's first uh, techno, really not even mine. He, he bought this and he was like, oh yeah, you know, this is um, a really interesting phone. Um, you can look at some of the features, the 1.3 megapixel camera with flash, um, high resolution TFT screen, Phone book with fuzzy query, uh, with the fuzzy query. Um, universal accessories, dual SIM standby support, uh, WAP. Uh, yo, this is like old tech. G GPRS class 12, uh, an internet modem, uh, MP3, MP4 player. Never used it. A motion sensor. Hmm, actually, that's actually interesting for phone from this time. An ebook reader, a Bluetooth radio. Uh, most of these things I never used them. I just wanted to text. I was in high school back then. Yeah, so this, this, actually this is the oldest. This is actually my dad's phone when, when was that? 2007. This phone was amazing, so tiny. Let me see if I can find it. So, yeah, I thought I could find this and I actually found it. Let me see if it turns on. Uh, it's really much dead. Yeah. But yeah, can you imagine? This is this is um, this is this is actually <laughs> the SGH X630. Um, do you have tri-band VGA camera, 65K color TFT display, stereo FM, video messaging and recording? Yo, Bluetooth wireless technology was actually like a big feature back then. Um, 40 poly ringtones and MP3 music player. We don't really store about 10 songs. Uh, on the inside, yeah, but um, it could play MP3, ACC files, pretty good. If it is major throwback, major, major throwback, major throwback. Okay, um, next up is here's what I have the box for is the Moto Razor. This was actually my mom's phone. Um, uh, regardless of so um my dad bought her this phone and i remember like she has it in her hand and it's like playing the adverts are playing on telly like how the s7 edge is playing right now on telly this is playing on telly it's just a major release from from um from motorola um yeah so let's just take a look at um at the phone itself yeah so this one is really beat i've actually just found this phone uh like <laughs> This plastic around somewhere. My dad just keeps all this stuff. I don't even know where I would put them, but yeah. Um, the last time I tried to use this thing, it, it was pretty sucky. But but yeah, this is how fast phones have come. This is how far phones have come. It's, uh, back then, having a flip phone and having a VGA camera that this is actually pretty pretty intelligent. Having the camera right here, so that, like when you flip it, it's like a back camera. And you could actually you could actually take photos from from the screen. So so yeah, this is a major throwback to Motorola now, which is owned by Lenovo. Yeah, this is for me. This is a major throwback. Um, next up is 
this um, this is the E250. Um, my my mom got this. Um, what is it? Well, I can't remember the, the, the exact model number, but it is the E250. Um, this is kind of like the the smaller brother to the to the D88, D80. Back when the D88 was like the ultimate, um, what you'd call it, like business phone from Samsung. Um, but these phones are pretty good. I use it also for a bit. Uh, I got a lot of hand-me-downs. <laughs> this was one of them. Um, so yeah. My dad loved Samsung phones. He couldn't let go. Even when um, when, when Androids came along, he when touch screens were a big thing, just come out. He decided to go out for this. This phone is. Um, I'll get the model number and just put it down below. Um, but this is one of Samsung's most unique phones. This is the struggle not to go Android till they went Android, just before uh, uh, this is the start of the Galaxy lineups. Now you can see resemblance to like you can think this is an Android phone actually, but this is just running like Samsung's proprietary operating system at that time. They weren't running Tizen OS, so this was like the the main operating system for them um, at that time. Uh, Hopefully, I can still find a charger for this thing. Um, but it was a really amazing device. Um, to show you the power of the USB, let me just pop open, um, pry open this. Um. Yeah, so uh, the USB, the USB, um, the USB port could actually handle um, the M drive focus in it right now. Um, Focus. Yeah, so the USB port actually was, um, was a really interesting one because it, it actually handled both audio as you can see on the flap and uh, that data transfer and charging. Really interesting uh, concept right there. Yeah, so go back to the focus. Um, yeah, so these are some of the old phones that. Um, that I've ever had, or rather I've seen in my household. Um, actually, I got. In, I was actually impressed when I realized how how interesting our family is in terms of um, what kind. Of, yeah. So back when Android was just starting out, um, Itel was this was among the cheaper phones that you could get. These phones were five thousand shillings um, each. The Android Heron, you know, that screen was horrendous. That I hated the touchscreen. Like it was just terrible. But let's see the specs. It's um, Android 2.3, uh, 0.5, 3.5 um, um, inch HPG touchscreen. Uh, that's 320 by 480. Um, a dual a dual camera, which is not actually a dual camera. It's two cameras. This is, that's what you should say. Um, a one gigahertz CPU, 512 B uh, storage. That's storage right there. Like when they tell you 512 B, it's that's the storage. That's 256 MB RAM. Look how far we've come. Uh, a 1,500 mAh battery. You have Edge, GPRS, um, and GSM. Um, a USB port, a micro USB port that is. Uh, Wi-Fi hotspot, and 22.1, which actually features of Android itself on the phone. Um, and the phone looked like this. It was horrendous. It was an ugly phone. Uh, China phones. Man, it's just, um, Color choices, man. Just horrid. Um, so we had two of these. They're actually my sisters and my brothers. Um, then I used those for a while. And no phone would miss passing through my hands. So right after that, um, I think this would be the next phone I had um, back in my early days in campus. This is the second Samsung phone I had. Um, the previous one I had was the Galaxy Y um, Duos, which is a kind of 3.5 screen, uh, uh, 835 megahertz processor, pretty, pretty much the same specs as this, but that was running Android 2.3. Uh, uh, this was a whole different level for me because this was running um, Android 4.0, uh, HSBDA, first 3G phone that I had. Uh, quad band, um, actually, the second 3G phone that I had. 
a backup weapon. 3G was not awesome, it just it was covered kinda, it wasn't that good. But it was just nice to know that you had 3G and bundles anyway. I didn't buy much bundles for so just what's up. Um uh 2.8 uh 2.8 inch display QVGA it was it was horrid. Uh two megapixel fixed focus camera uh and tattoos for Android. Yeah, so Android Wi-Fi certified. It was it was just really smaller than this box. It was horrid. It was horrid. The smaller than the iPhone. It's just, it was kind of this size. Uh this is my hand. My hand is not that big, but this phone is this around that size. It's horrid. Um the next one I think I had um, was the Huawei W2 for Africa. Yeah, this this phone was stolen actually. Um, I was robbed of it. Uh, maybe for good reason because the Windows platform, in my opinion, is not as good as um, you all hope it is. Hope it would be. Um, but it was the specs. Specs spec wise, it was a really good phone. You had a uh, oh. 4.3 inch WVG screen, which means it is 480 by 800 pixels. Um, here had a Qualcomm S4 dual core 1.4 gigahertz processor, uh, Windows Phone 8, and 8 GB ROM, 512 MB RAM. I was I was, I didn't complain much with RAM because um, back then 512 MB RAM for Windows phones was like a lot. Uh, most of the Nokia flagships actually had pretty much pretty easily RAM, 1 GB probably. Um, 5 megapixel camera with autofocus, a 720p video capture play and playback, um, Intel Explorer 10. Can you imagine the Explorer man? Uh, what did you do to us? Um, uh, tiles People Office. Yeah, and this phone was actually a really good phone, in my opinion. Uh, among the better ones, uh, until Huawei stopped making Windows phones. They quit, they realized the platform is dead. Yeah, early enough. Uh, this is very interesting. So I, I just I didn't expect to film this actually. This was unplanned. I just saw boxes um, when I was leaving um, the room and I decided to just look at them. This was not my phone particularly. This is my small sister's phone. She wanted the phone and my dad got it. So you can see iNote again. So let's see again the evolution of the iNote series from um, iTel. So you have the iNote Heron. Uh, which is a one gigahertz processor uh remember this phone is probably from about 2012 uh 2012 2013 about there yeah about the those at that time uh to android 2.3.5 edge you know this need the specs and you have this newer generation i i think you can probably even find this phone right now in the shops um this is the uh it 14.03 iNote series um, so you have Android 4.4, interesting, so let's see the specs again, um, so you have Android 4.4, uh, WVGA touchscreen again, um, actually a bit better, HVGA to WVGA is actually a, a step up, um, a 5 megapixel camera, 3 megapixel camera, terrible cameras if I am to be honest, um, a 1 gigahertz processor CPU hasn't changed much, um, 2 GB RAM, 256 MB RAM, just like the probably three-year-old phone, <laughs> um, uh, uh, 1700 milliamp hour. I'm hoping about that. At least that's 3G. Um, had a USB port and Wi-Fi, and had a, a smartphone flip case that could apparently protect your phone from what? From what? So the final entries are from Alcatel, and these two are represent. Uh, two very different things. Um, this is the Alcatel Pop C5. Um, I'm a, the first Alcatel phone I ever had. And this phone here was actually pretty good. I loved it. Um, so if you look at the back, the Android 4.2.2, um, a 4.5 inch uh, uh, WVG screen. Um, I also had um, a dual core 1.3 gigahertz display, uh, 3G, uh, 5 megapixel camera, which is pretty okay, and GPS. Uh, those are the main features of the phone. There's nothing else. The box is pretty much just colors inside, uh, telling you that it's a smart move. Probably was. Uh, it was good for the price. wasn't too expensive, and it was a worthwhile device. I actually, my mom, my mom bought me this, so uh, I loved it. I loved it. Um, yeah.
it was a good choice. I, I chose it. She bought me this, but I also chose it. So it also kind of represents like um, yeah, my smartphone choices are not been too bad. Yeah. Lastly, but not least of them, is not even a smartphone. This is the Alcatel watch. It's a smartwatch. Kind of smartwatch. It isn't exactly a smartwatch. It is like a really good digital watch. Um, it did a couple of things. Uh, sadly, I don't even have it with me because uh, I went to swim with it in the ocean and ruined it completely. Died. Yeah. The Alcatel guys told me it's beyond repair. So yeah, this was actually a really, really fantastic uh, uh, watch. However, it, it was a bit small for my hands, so it looked a bit weird. Uh, but and the straps were a bit too stiff. Uh, this is the first generation uh, smartwatch from Alcatel. I had actually fallen in love with Alcatel after using the Alcatel Pop, Pop C5. Um, however, this is still an amazing, amazing uh, smartwatch. Um, I got to learn a lot about what a smart a smartwatch should be and what it could be. And I'll leave some of those opinions uh, with you in a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, so these are most of the devices that I've had over the course of the past five, six years. Yeah, so I need it longer. Uh, some of the much longer probably from about ten, uh, 10 years ago. So. 2007, yeah, about that. Um, so yeah, so this wins the competition for the oldest phone that is in this mix. Um, 10 years old and amazing. It still, still fits good in the hand. Really small phone. Um, but I believe the problem with this phone, I would still like play around with it. But finding the charger for this phone is not a joke. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, that's it for today. I just want to share my my ideas and all the phones that I've had I've had and seen in my house ever since. Um, at least for the boxes I could find. I, I, I could tell you there's been a lot more phones than these. Uh, especially the first ones in the Nokia phones 3310, of which I'm going to try and get the 2017 version one and review it. Uh, I've done a review, I've written a review about it before. Uh, but, but yeah, I think I think I'll be able to yeah to come up with something cooler next time. Uh, so we really some really old phones and tell you about it. Yeah, so so yeah, let's go. Yeah, so just wanted to share my phones over the years. Um, hope you loved it. Um, share, comment, subscribe. I get two videos this week just because you know last week I didn't do anything. Um, but um, hopefully this also is some really good content to bring back some nostalgia and also get you thinking about what's your, what's your next Christmas present. Yeah, will you get a, will you get a smart watch? Will you get a, a smart band? Will you get uh, smart glasses uh, or Snapchat spectacles? I'm looking to get one. Who's getting me one? I don't know. One of you guys? I don't know. But anyway, yeah, so uh, choose your products carefully. Uh, they really like tend to define who you are, um, they will they will play a big impact in how in what you do. For most for people who don't really care about uh, multimedia, may not be able to look at the camera. Just as long as the phone gets things done, email, whatever, and most phones can do that now. You know, most uh, the push notification systems and operating systems like Android have really improved over time. Uh, no one's using Blackberries anymore, um, and then your Blackberry became and uh, it just became Android phones anyway. Um, iOS devices are still pretty good, they're pretty pricey all the same. Um, but um, yeah, just make your smartphone choices wisely. Um, they will come to play a big impact. If I was buying iPhones all this while, I'd have very few boxes here with me. Um, but all this while, it's like all kinds of weird phones, China phones, um, iTel, all, all these phones. Um, so, so yeah. Um, I'm really glad that you guys watched this video. Uh, yeah, let's continue growing this channel, growing this community. Uh, we'll talk about mobile tech. What are you interested in in terms of, um, of phones and uh, being the, being a developer? Yeah, just tell me about it, yeah, and we'll see. Um, I've been really looking to generate content uh, about development. Um, I'm still working uh, out uh, some of the kinks uh, along that. I mean, along those lines. Yeah. Okay. So, um, till next time.
Estou em que 